Hi, this is the first session on oh, measure theory, measure and integration. I know many of you had requested me. Okay. The first two, two sessions, I will try to give some kind of geometric ideas, intuition, okay, some kind of uh, what you call brainstorming sessions. I taught the course several times to master's degree students. Each time I've done that. In some sense, these two lectures prepares the students and it kind of gives them correct perspective what to look for and what to expect in Lebesgue measure theory. This seems to help them to understand it better rather than simply proving a theorem you do not know why you thought of it why the proof works etc okay so i i hope that the magic will work even here okay stay tuned we'll get started so for those of you who are new to the series this is my channel youtube.com backslash C, C for channel, Kumar, it's just you. And if at all you want to communicate anything to me, send comments or something, queries, please send it to this email. Okay. If you happen to know any other email of mine, please don't use that. This email is exclusively for the purpose of my video lectures on YouTube channel. And you can download the list of all my videos, which are about 380 videos, I believe. Okay, the list will be available here. This 4D space mtts.org.in forward slash EA forward slash EA for expository article. You look for the list of videos. Okay, that will be a PDF file. The list will give descriptions of the videos, what it contains, and the URL links of the videos and the videos are arranged topic wise in a very systematic way so that if you want to learn the subject which video you should start with which is the second which is the third like that okay and some of you are helping me to periodically update this list i thank them all and the updates whenever they are uh, uploaded to the site it will be announced through the post to my channel okay right now let's get started so this is the first lecture as I said and the reference is a forthcoming book by Kumari and Sheetal. There are lots and lots of books on measure theory. Okay, If you have any first favorite, please have a look at that. I have no issues. But I would suggest from student friendly point of view, two books. One is Dibara and Aikarana. Both Indian editions are available. Okay, Needless to say, my way of looking at things will be somewhat very different from many of the things but they are good books right so let us get started let me see how it writes okay good so what does measure theory mean maybe I should I don't want to write it here I'll first come back go to the video what does measure theory integration theory means First, all of you should understand integration precedes differentiation because all of us were introduced to integration as some kind of reverse process of differentiation. Okay, that's because Newton introduced differential calculus and also understood the connection between differentiation and integration. Okay, all of us do that because it's much easier. To do integration theory using Newton's method. Okay, now why integration theory precedes? So, with, for that, we should understand the geometry behind that. See, integration theory started when we wanted to measure the area of some irregular things or volume of certain irregular three dimensional objects. Okay, so how do you do that? If you can look at Google or something, you can see how did they find the area of a circle, okay, various kinds of things, or area of sphere, etc. So, you can see the idea is you try to find approximate it by means of some 
geometric figures usually geometric figures which are built out of line segments which are enclosed by line segments okay various line segments like a polygon etc for which we okay we can reasonably associate the notion of an area or a length or volume or whatever you want okay so this happened in archimedes time much much earlier okay i am not good in history it must be at least 2500 years ago okay right so but in modern thing integration theory what does it deal with you have some set x let's not worry about x need not be an interval to start with okay it need not be an interval in r just for the time being start okay or if you want to think of okay an interval in r and f is a positive function positive meaning non negative function from the interval a b to r okay then there uh, you look at the area enclosed by four curves what are the four curves x equal to a okay from your side x equal to a x equal to b and y equal to 0 y equal to fx right these are the four curves so you want to associate the notion of length so how do you do that that's what riemann attempted first okay before that cauchy etc also have done but let's not worry about we'll start to think so let's begin to share and explain so what we want to do in Riemann integration so I have something like a b okay and I have a non negative function okay let us cut it here so it is stop here okay then I have the area this is a x equal to b this is x equal to a this is y equal to 0 and this is y equal to fx notice that uh, the curve could have been like this also okay then this is the area I am looking for okay so how do you find that so remember what he did was the following what he did is he subdivided see what are the simplest functions for which we can associate area so they are the step functions okay when you did Riemann integral it, many teachers may not even talk about but it's a good to do that suppose a b let's say an interval and f is a function from a b to r let's assume f is also greater than or equal to 0 to start with okay yeah. to define step function I don't need this okay not necessary to define step function okay but to draw the picture and to try to tell you about the area I'm assuming it's thing okay so what is that I subdivide the interval a b okay I can find a partition of the interval something like this okay let us assume always like this here and like this here and like this here etc and each of these things let's me call this as okay j0 j1 and maybe call it j1 j2 jn okay this is a partition and each one of them it is constant right then the picture will look like what if this is a b the picture will look like this okay on this this is c1 okay so this is this is open okay on this this may be c2 okay this is c2 this is c1 on this this may be c3 and okay so on this may be c4 cn this is cn rectangle okay so we know what how to find the area of the rectangles so what will i do so call this j1 j2 jn then the area is going to be length of j1 times c1 the area here of this rectangle will be length of j2 the area of c and this will be length of jn into the height okay this is the area this is the area 
of the region enclosed by x equal to a, x equal to b, y equal to 0 and y equal to fx where we are assuming f is greater than equal to 0. Is that okay? Right. Yeah. So, what Riemann did was he tried to subdivide this a, b. Okay. Let me just uh, take a break and talk to you directly. See, I am trying to quickly recall Riemann diagonal, but I am not going into details because there is a lot of geometry and unless you either read my book on Riemann and sorry, real analysis or watch the videos on Riemann and Degrel, okay, you may not have understood the geometry behind that. I know many students who have reasonably good understanding of analysis have problem with the Riemann integration because the geometry is never brought out. Okay. And second thing, as I said in my post, please, please go through my videos on GLB, LUB or what Rodin etc. call infimum supremum. Okay. Almost everybody calls it infimum supremum. Those are very important for any kind of integration theory, they are very important. And many students problem with integration theory is just their lack of understanding of GLB and LUB. Okay. Please learn that. Okay. So, what he did was, he partitioned this, let me call this as he call it as x naught, this is x1 and this is xj and minus 1 xj and this is xn minus 1, this is xn. Then he let, he let mi to be, he assumed the function f from a, b to r is bounded. Okay. He also assumed this is a closed and bounded interval. Okay, then this is the infimum of fx as okay x varies between xi okay xi minus one let us say xi minus one let the i equal to x let the i equal to xi okay on this interval this is xj okay xj if you want and mj to be this is glb and this is lub of the same thing the same set since it's bounded these things exist then he formed the upper and lower sums the i usually the many books will write lfp i write lfp this is a lower sum of f corresponding to the partition p this is called the partition p this by definition is mj into length of the thing xj to xj minus 1 and j running from 0 to n, n my Okay, so this will be n m not here and then. Okay, if you think of this as a function, this may be your m not, and this may be your capital M, m not like that. I do not get into that, then I will not be able to reach. And this is m j x j minus x j minus one j equal to zero to n. I hope I wrote it correctly. If I did something wrong, please let me know because I am assuming xn. Okay, therefore this must be xj to right. Let me write slightly modify xj plus 1 to xj, xj plus 1 to xj. This is mg. Right? So this is your xj, this is xj plus 1, and the infimum, so these are this mg. Okay, so index by this y. Okay, therefore this will be correct. Okay, now notice that what do you say? What Riemann integral? Riemann integral of f exists if. Okay, I don't want to get into that again. Okay, the LUB of f. Okay, of this set LFP where p is any partition. Of A B happens to be G L B of U F P. That is, these are called upper sums. Okay, this is a lower sum, lower darbo sum. This is upper darbo sum. Okay. 
Now what does it intuitively means? It intuitively means you are able to approximate the area okay enclosed by those four curves. can be approximated from within in and from without from outside from within this is LFP from outside it is UFP ok please go to my things that's not very important for me what is important is I wanted to see suppose P is a partition, this is my x naught, this is my x1, this is my xj, this is my xj plus 1 and this is my xn minus 1 and this is my xn which is equal to b, this is equal to a, right. Notice that I can define a step function on this, on this I define, okay, my step function, okay, define a step function, okay, call it s. So, S of X equal to MJ if X belong to XJ, XJ plus 1. Okay. This is open, this is closed. Okay. And at the other end, this will be on. Okay. Because here, I will have something like closed XN minus 1 to B. B is also closed. So, that I get everything right here this is the this is the partition of the interval and when it comes to last this is the interval okay i don't want to write these things okay and similarly sigma x to be mj where x belong to this this is when j equal to n minus 1 okay so notice that now what is the integral of the integral of s is nothing other than lower sum and integral of the step function sigma is nothing other than upper sum. I go through that because what did we do? This will be little m, let us say this is little m, this is m naught, then the area is this, whereas it is capital M and let us say the capital M is this and the area is capital M not times x naught x minus, that is what we are adding. Okay? Please pause, review, proceed. So, what I have shown is the following if f is a bounded function from the closed and bounded interval. Okay, then Riemann integral f a to b. This is Riemann integral. Okay, I can think of this is the the L u b of s where s is a step function such so that zero less than or equal to s less than or equal to my f. Okay, on here on the interval a b. And what does this mean? This means s x is the dot equal to f x for all x in whatever interval on the interval a b. Okay, and it's also equal to g l b of sigma, where sigma is a step function, so that s is the dot sorry f is the dot equal to sigma. Okay, understand this. What I just now recast the integrability, Riemann integrability of a bounded function in a closed and bounded interval in terms of step functions is mostly not done in a course. But that is a very important thing because step function is the easiest one for which I can write down the notion of integral. Okay, please understand. Go through, again rewind, okay, go through it, understand it. Okay, that is the first thing. Now we are going, I'm, the next part, now I am going to say, what is the 
cardinal, most important difference between Lebesgue measure the theory of integration and Riemann theory of integration. Okay, I am going to explain that, and that's a very beautiful thing. Okay, we will do that. So what we saw here is Riemann integral integration theory. Okay, wanted to partition. This is actually Darbo because if there are uh, stickler for detail, they will say this is not Riemann integral. This is a Darbo's version. Anyway, this integral wanted to partition the domain of the function, and then do various things. You understand? Okay. Now comes the crux. Okay. Suppose x is any set. This is the basic difference between Riemann Darbo integral and Lebesgue's approach. Okay. And f is a function from x to r. Let us assume again f is non-negative to start with. Okay. What you did is, so th this may be your x. Okay. And this is my r. Okay. This is let us say 0. Okay. Think of this r. Right. Now, let us assume the range. Okay. Let us look at f of x. This is the range. Okay. It may be bounded or unbounded, but let us not worry about. Right. Then what do I do? Let us for the time being, let us assume that is bounded. That is not necessary. Right? Now, what you do is, you try to partition this domain. This Sorry, the range. Okay? Partition the range. Right? So, suppose this is one. This is one range. Let us call it JK. Okay? This may be some alpha K to alpha K plus 1. Okay? This may be alpha 0. This may be some alpha n. Okay, this is a range. Now, what you do is you look at again if you want, think of it like this. Okay, this one final one will be like this. Okay, doesn't right now look at the inverse image of this fellow. Okay, this is your f and look at inverse image. This okay. This is will be f inverse of. Let me call it uh, uh, k f inverse of alpha k to alpha k plus one. Right. So depending upon each of these partition, I'll have some kind of a partition. Okay, the picture looks very nice, but in reality it may not. Let us not worry about. Okay, these are the various partitions. These are my various EKs. Right? Therefore, I can construct something like a step function. Okay, what is a step function? I will define, given f, let me define step function c x of x to be something like f of x if x belong to e, e k. Sorry, I am sorry. Yeah. Okay. Choose, let us also say, choose a c k in the interval alpha k to alpha k plus alpha k to alpha k plus 1 and open. It could even be alpha k. Okay. c k can be alpha k. Okay, does not matter. Okay, choose something and define it to be c k. You understand this? For all the point here, I am choosing some element, fix it. I am fixing it. Okay, define that. So, what I have done, I have written as, as a disjoin union of e k. Okay, this is disjoin. Okay, and therefore, if you give me an x, it belongs to a unique e k. And I define s of x equal to c k. What is c k? c k is an element which is fixed at in the interval alpha k to alpha k plus 1. Do you understand? Right? Now, I will, I want to define integral of this, call this as a step function. 
this is usually will be something like simple function in measure theory later okay but this is analog of our step function define integral of s to be integral of s over x whatever it may mean equal to okay this ck into some length area or volume of the set ek Do you understand this? No. So, in some sense, I should know if this is the area. Okay, these are objects. Think of this in R two, if you want. Think of this. Okay, a piece from R two to R, and okay, a piece from some open set, some set. Let's say some set A in R two to R, which is non-negative. Okay, and these are my E K. Then this is some subset of R two. Then I want to associate the notion of area. Okay, then what do I want to do? Think of this as a kind of region below. Okay, so I have a region below on R two. This is my E K, and here the height is C K. Therefore, what do I want? This is something like a cylinder, right? This is some very very curved area. Then what do I want? This a cylinder on that. Then what? What should be the volume then? Area times. The height of the cylinder, C K. Do you understand this? That's what we did. Please appreciate. Take time, okay? And remember, here we are getting intuitive ideas. So don't worry about because if you are too algebraically oriented, if you are, you have been taught rigorous the backbone of mathematics, okay, you will have a lot of problem. Okay. first whenever you want to solve some problem you should get some ideas you should get generate ideas if you want to create a theory you are more, you are going to be more creative that is why einstein said imagination is more important than intelligence i would say it is more important not more important equally important as rigor okay but many people do not try to kind of encourage you to be very creative imagine okay you are they always impose upon you too much of rigor then you will not have flexibility to think ahead okay you understood the basic idea right now what is the problem you see in the whole thing right now you see that's a problem because now If if I have a function f from R to to R, it's a let's say assume bounded etc. etc. Okay, I have a finite partition of the range, and I can construct subsets E K where E K is our inverse images of the partitioning subintervals. Right? It may be a very weird set. What do I mean by the area of that set? Do you understand? Second, but what is the advantage of this? somehow let x p n is set okay for the time being think of for every subset e or a of x i have the notion of area or volume or length of the set you understand a is a subset of some set x somehow you already have a prescribed a notation prescribed a measure given a i know what is measure of a length of a or area of a or volume of that object okay then i can define integral over on that set also so what all it required is it required some notion of associating notion of a length or area or volume for every subset a of x please think it's not important you have to understand 100% of what i'm saying try to get the idea that gives you some kind of correct perspective because if you are looking at only one direction you may be missing the thing so i am asking you to think like this so you see i am showing the direction in which you have to think okay then you will see it's much easier yeah let us look, go back and look at an example the whole life seems to be easy but let's look at see all of you have seen the dirichlet function
f from let's say close interval 0 1 to r what is that f of x equal to 1 if x is in q and intersection of 0 1 and equal to 0 if x is in 0 1 minus q it's irrational then you, you might have seen it's a reminder does not exist or something but let us look at what is the range of this this is my going to be my x what is the range of f range of f consists of only 12 things right so if i have 0 1 okay right now i have i can partition take any partition okay then what will be f inverse of let us call this j naught and j1 f inverse of j naught will be 0 1 intersect with uh, sorry 0 1 minus q okay and f inverse of j1 will be 0 1 intersected with q right assume that uh, this point is strictly in between 0 and 1 otherwise you may think of something so right okay do you understand this now this is my let us say my e naught this is my e1 okay now this what is e naught e naught is set of rationals in 0 1 so what is the length of e naught and similarly what is the length of e1 you see i have a problem right in r2 you can do the same thing take a unit square 0 1 cross 0 1 take only rationals in that okay define one on that uh, rationals inside the unit square outside one you have the same problem right our geometry it may look very very complicated set i may not even be able to find how, what is the area you understand this so what is the problem here the, so this is what i give you again an analogy see there is a difference between architect and an engineer architect and can use okay his empirical knowledge and imagine something depending upon your customers okay desires i want something like this something like that it should be here it should be there etc based on that he can construct he can come up with a blueprint of a building of a structure but engineer may have difficulty in constructing such a thing okay there is a science involved you have to see its balance it has to stand sturdy it should last at least for a few decades various kinds of constructions are you know diff constraints are there you understand so what we have done is artist work architects work sorry architects work there that is we imagine a situation where we can integrate on any set provided we have the notion of length area or volume or you call it something later we'll call it a measure okay for every subset a of x i want a measure of a let me call it measure where measure may be intuitively length area or volume then i seem to have some idea do you see that yeah so how do i do that now comes the problem that means given a set x how to associate the notion of measure for each and every subset of a a of x every subset a of x yeah now let's go back to r2 because i most often i try to illustrate everything in r2 and rn because in r2 and rn i can draw a lot of pictures in r what kind of a subset i can draw right points or some kind of interval nothing more right so it doesn't allow us to imagine very complicated stuff and also see okay right so let's go back so this means so let us start with gen general rn n may be greater than or equal to 1 okay and i will assume n is always 2 so that my pictures will be 2 okay what do i want so i have a power set of rn okay this is all subs class of all subsets power set okay. okay then what do i want i want the notion of in this case for n equal to 1 you call it length n equal to 2 you call it area 
n equal to 3 you call it volume and in general general n you call it measure ok so I will call it simply n dimensional volume in general so therefore given any set E in P of R n I want let me say V n of E ok this is the volume n dimensional volume. So, when n equal to 1, I want it to be length. For example, set of rational points in 0, 1, I want it to be n dimensional. 1 dimensional volume simply means length. If but I take set of all rational points in unit square, I want to be area of that and so on. Okay? So, we will usually denote it by something like m of e to life make it easy and n also I will drop. Okay, I will call it measure. Okay, so, I want a function from P of R n to non-negative thing 0 to infinity. Okay, I am allowing 0, I am allowing infinity. That means, I expect some sets may have length 0 okay, or volume 0 or area 0 and similarly, I want some sets may have okay, no finite area at all, finite measure at all, finite length at all, finite volume at all. For example, if I take I entire R2, I do not expect it to have finite area. All right? That is intuition, we will come to that later, why I expect it. Okay? So, I am looking for such a function, but whenever you want something, we should look for some ideal situations. Okay? Suppose, I get a set A in R2, how do you think I can find the area of A. It is a very, very irregular uh, yeah, shape. How do you think I can find? Notice that this is again inherent trait in the entire human mind and especially in mathematics. You try to reduce it to something which you already know. What do I know? In the case of R2, I know what, what is the area of a rectangle. If rectangle is okay, length is L and breadth is B, then I know the area is L times B. These are the simplest. Even your uh, formula for uh, area of uh, sorry triangle etc. came from this. At least right angle triangle. From that you can do uh, other things. Okay. So you understand what I mean. So the basic thing is in what you do is I I know the the area of a rectangle. Right. So if I want to associate the notion of a area for any subset A of R two. Do I want to disrupt this? It should coincide with the area, standard area as you know, right? If A happens to be a rectangle, I want the new area should be the same as the old area. Do you understand what I mean? In some sense, I am extending. Okay? Let us go back and explain that. Suppose this R, okay, is a class of all rectangles. Rectangles. In the case of N, Okay, any rectangle, n-dimensional rectangle is product of intervals. Okay, for example, in an ordinary rectangle in R2 is this kind of stuff. Okay, only I am, but these rectangles are with the respect, you know, the sides are parallel to the axis. Okay, that is good enough for me. Okay, sides parallel to axis. Okay, now I have the for any give me any rectangle here. Okay, if R is our form, let us say a one b one cross a n b n. Okay, so what will be the area? N dimensional area. Okay, that will be product of b i minus a i equal to one n. Do you understand this? Yeah. So, what I want is, now notice this, this R will also be P of R n. So, what I want first is, if I have a notion of measure from R n to R, it is actually positive, non negative, right? Then, when I restrict M to script R, it should be the standard areas function. Do you understand this? Pause. Review proceed. 
So that's the first crime. See, whenever I want to have a new feature, I want to make sure my old comfort are actually taken care of. Right? Whatever I enjoy, when I want to extend, I want to move to some other place, I want these kind of things, basic needs which I have been enjoying for such a long time should continue to be and perhaps I get the extra features. You understand that? That is what extension always means. Okay? You all of you know what it means, right? If A is a subset of X, F is a function from A to A to Y, when do I say G is an extension of yeah, extension of F? G must be a function from X to Y so that G of X equal to F of X whenever X is in A. I call it an extension. Here what do I have? My set is all power set of R and and a special classes set of all rectangles whose sides are parallel to the axis. And I have a very natural notion of area there. So what do I want? When I want to extend this notion of area to larger class, I want this to be protected. You understand that? Okay. Next, what is the second thing you can expect? See, I have some area, right? And the same area I translate elsewhere in R2. Think of an RN, I have a rectangle or a, some shape, a circle somewhere and okay, this same circle I translate elsewhere. What do you expect the area to be? It should remain the same. You understand that? For example, if I buy, okay, a, a, let's say shirt, shirt cloth from a clothing store and he measures 2.7 2.225 meters in his shop when I come to my home you should wear again 2.25 meters when I go to tailor for stitching you should also be 2.25 right you should not vary with the space where you measure right it should be translation invariant do you understand that that is a second condition you want to impose so let us go ahead and impose that so this is the first condition okay this is the Features I require. Required feature. Okay, second is translation invariant. Okay, so what does that mean? It means the following that is, you suppose you start with a set E, subset of Rn, okay, and suppose x is a vector in Rn. I translate x plus e. What does this mean? This is x plus y where o is in e. Okay. Then what do I want? I have measure of e that is n dimensional area, n dimensional length or n dimensional volume. This must be same of measure of x plus e or e plus x. Okay. This is same as e plus x. But that is not needed. Let us stick to 1. Is that a very reasonable thing? Very good. And third thing is again important. Suppose I think of, okay, I am a real estate tycoon, right? So, in, in let's say in Mumbai, I bought a plot of certain area, okay? of some square yard, square, square feet, whatever you want to call it, square feet, let us say, okay, whatever the current unit, okay. So, I have alpha units, alpha square units of a plot here and another place I buy at another place totally, okay, this may be in Dombivili, this may be in Kandivili, okay, whatever it is, okay, there I buy another plot, okay, of area B, beta, then how much real estate I own now? alpha plus beta square units, right? Do you understand that? Yeah? That is, in other words, if I have two design sets A and B in Rn, okay, then I have A union B is another set. For that set, I have the notion of n-dimensional volume, M of A union B, but A and B are disjoint. So, what should I expect? M of A union B should be M of A plus M of B. That is what is called additivity. So, let us write that. The condition, second condition is 
let me call it finite additivity that is if a and b are in rn and and a and b are disjoint then a union b is also a, a subset of rn therefore m of a union b also should make sense and i also have m of a and m of b and what do i expect this relation should be between these numbers should be m of a union b must be m of a plus m of b yeah right you understand but what i'm going to write are something similar to the earlier one but next few things i will write but these are all the intuitive things based on our physical i notions of length area and volume in real life okay we will see something interesting towards the end of the course not towards the end after about 15 to 20 lectures we will see that there is also another thing suppose i have set a which is a subset of b then what should be the n dimensional area of a and the n dimensional area of b what relation should be between them a is a subset of b so natural right i would expect it to be m of a should be less than or equal to of mob b that's a monotonicity right but that's actually follows from finite additivity but let's let's not worry about it at present so this is another thing a monotonicity that is if a b are in rn and a is a subset of b then I expect m of a should be less than or equal to m of b notice that i can write b as a union b minus a right so this is a disjoint union therefore m of b must be equal to m of a plus m of b minus a notice that this is non negative therefore m of b must be greater than or equal to m of a this will follow from finite additivity right okay yeah I, i forgot to screen share let me go back so monotonicity means if a is as and a and b are subsets of rn a is contained in b then i would expect m of a should be less than equal to m of b but i claim this actually follows from finite additivity why write b as a union b minus a this is a disjoint union right therefore by finite additivity m of b must be m of a plus m of b minus a but remember m of b minus a is greater than or equal to 0 because our n dimensional volume takes values in where non negative numbers right yeah therefore this follows okay now let's go to that okay now suppose i want to find the area of some irregular shape so some of you might have seen how archimedes found the area of a circle etc what he did he put so yeah n dimensional regular polygon inside and try to exhaust right so i have a polygon pn which is in the circle right pn is contained in pn plus 1 and pn plus maybe pn is contained in okay p power 2n is contained in p power 2n plus 1 and so on doesn't matter okay it keeps in thing so what do i expect i expect intuitively the area of the the region enclosed by the circle should be the limit of this monotone increasing sequence do you understand that let me draw a picture and try to explain so this is a fifth one okay behavior with respect to monotone increasing sequence of subsets that is suppose an increases okay that means an is contained in 
n plus 1. Then I, I by I, I def, by a, I define a to be the union. Okay, then I say an increases to a. The picture is like this. So I have a circle if you want. Okay. Okay, I have certain regions. Okay. So this is one region. This is a second region. Okay. This is a th third region. And fourth region will be I am adding something like this. Right. For these things I know the area. Right. So this an seem to increase to the area enclosed by the circle okay therefore I expect this area to be the limit of this okay this intuition as I said don't worry about thing this is how we found earlier days very very complicated objects we found the area or length by this kind of trick in fact even our Riemann integral in some sense that's what we try to do so what we have is then m of a should be equal to limit of an that means sorry limit of m of an that means m of an okay increases to m of a okay this is also expected this is a feature okay from this these are the basic features I require. Okay, this actually my finite additivity three and five actually yield yield this one. If B ends, okay, yes, sequence of pairwise disjoint sets. Okay, then let to be equal to union B n then I want to claim m of b equal to summation m of bn bn equal to 1 to infinity this is called countable additivity ok but this follows from the earlier one because if I look at an equal to b1 union b2 in and bn then you can see ans are increasing and where does a n increase to a n increase to b yeah why right what is a n my okay what does it mean union a n okay is nothing other than you 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 union b n right but that's my b and this is what i say a n increase to a okay think about it okay so what I want to say is therefore I want my measure from P of R n to R should be this is called countable additivity additivity that means you begins are pairwise design design then measure of union B n equal to summation measure of B n bn so we will come to an end for this first session so you can see these are the based on our okay daily experience with the real life objects these are the very very natural thing is there anything more there is one more thing okay maybe i should say that and uh, yeah stop the lecture these things actually will follow later but let's not worry about this is uh, with a few the sixth one is scaling see suppose I have a okay this is a this is b I make it 2a okay and 2b okay sorry this is 2b right then what is the area of this one I scale the rectangle R which is a B let us say cross C D okay by something like two times R that means 2 A 2 B and 2 C 2 D right 
So what is the area? Area of 2R is 2 to the power 2 into B minus A into C minus D. Sorry, D minus C. You understand this? So in general, if R and C is a positive scalar, R is a rectangle, R is a let us say, R is in P of R, R n, and I know what is C of R, C of R is Cx, Rx is in R, right, therefore measure of C of R, I want it to be C power n, okay, times measure of R, for example, n equal to 2, we wanted, when n equal to 1, if A, B, E multiplied by, this will be 2A, 2B, Okay, 2A to B. I am not saying it will be of this current. Okay, just picture pictorially. Therefore, 2 times B minus A. In the case of R2, 2 square times the original area. And R3, it will be 2 cubed times the original volume. So, in general. And if C is anything negative, then so I will say is mod C power n M of R. And this is true for any C. If C is 0, notice that this will be C of R will be 0 if C is 0. Then this will be 0. We have to say why its volume is 0. Okay. So, what you are listed is we wanted to extend the notion of the standard length, area, or volume from subsets of Rn to all a large class of subsets. Okay, we know have the notion of length of an interval, area of a rectangle, and the volume of a parallel pipe pod. Okay, that is they are the product of intervals parallel to the axis. Now I wanted to extend these things to a large class, that is all subsets of Rn. Then what are the desirable properties? We'll start about pi R6. Right? Now how to find one such? What is the way to get such a n dimensional volume. That is what I am going to explain in the second one. That will also be part of the intuitive ideas. Third session onwards, we will start with proper measure theory. I hope you enjoyed. Please go through. Again, let me warn you, don't worry about trying to understand 100%. You try to get the feel. Okay, what the way of thinking for the subject. That's all which we needed. After that, it will be easier. Okay, take care. Stay safe. We will meet again. Thank you.